Hello, everybody. So <clears throat> I think it makes sense for me to catch up on something that uh, Lynn, uh, Karen, Lynn, uh, Lynn, how you doing, Lynn? Karen had talked uh, talked to about it, so I had a kind of an interesting childhood. I had a uh, a parent, a father, who was a, a, a complete rage a hawk and would drop um, all of his his uh, anger and energy into me when he had something triggered him, and it was never clear what those things were. So I grew up, you know, you know, without a a whole lot a um, core values. I didn't. I grew up with a lot of things that were challenging for me in terms of understanding people's um, behaviors and things like that. So I, in many ways, I had a lifelong study of what was, um, you know, what made people tick. And I've been, I'm now in my fifth decade, almost at the end of my fifth decade of being an entrepreneur. And, um, <clears throat> and then over the last few years, um, it's been a lifelong journey, but over the last few years, I've had extremely intense uh, contact with the idea of the fact that even though I was successful as an entrepreneur, that I could have been way, way more successful if I had not been living this story of being abused, but lived my authentic story. And so as I've leaned in on my authentic story and I've taught others to lean in on their authentic story, which I will say is the story you were born with, um, it's changed the way people can pursue their careers, pursue their professions, and even seek business development or uh, sales volume or whatever the case may be, because the uh, it all of this happens in the authentic story. Now, stories used to be handed down in the past by um, just you know fireside chats or uh, you know father to to child or mother to child or or maybe uh, family circles and things like that. Eventually, we had books, and then we had TV and radio over the last uh, you know you know hundred years or so, <clears throat> and um, and now more recently we have the internet. Yet all of these stories aren't necessarily assuring us there's, and we, we pay attention to stories. Stories were how we learn to survive. And now it's time to learn how to thrive. So if I could ask you, thank you. So um, why is business changing? Because we are tired. We're tired people. We're tired of receiving 100 pieces of mail every day that don't serve us. We're tired of COVID, we're tired of the pace of society being all self-serving. We're tired of the limitations we have in making real contact with people, that everything is all about what's in it for me, what's the, what's the, <clears throat> what, what is this contact gonna get me as opposed to can I just have a healthy relationship? So um, the reason why story matters is because story is part of the human condition. And, um, you know, and I'll look at this idea. Sometimes I'll relate the story to me just because it's easier than talking about some of my clients. But the, the idea is, is that um, I spent, my human condition was survival mode. And all the stories I was living by were stories that allowed me to look great or perhaps sometimes even feel great. But all those stories were designed to serve me. <clears throat> and um, and if, when we get right down to it, our authentic ser story serves others. So... Uh, why um, why uh, having an authentic story makes a difference is because we no longer have to live in fear of rejection um, because we lean in on our stories. We live our stories with great deal of ferocity, great deal of value attached to our stories. And we avoid the I'm not worthy. And we have, I, we don't, and then we have, uh, and, and being an authentic story means we now know our story. So what happens in an authentic story? What happens in a real story? What happens in our stories once we learn what those really are and they're revealed to us is that we become relatable and connectable. That uh, allows people to uh, empathize or at least think we empathize with them. So um, and inside of that, we earn trust. Inside of that, we get paid if we're in a business. And the other thing is, is that it's all very true. So. <clears throat> um, that looks like a duplicate, doesn't it? Okay. <laughs> what makes a um, story authentic is if it's raw, meaning it's there's we're not filtering it. Um, we tell the story as it is. It makes it truthful. It resonates people when they hear stories about our lives that are authentic and raw. Th then we be, they they identify with who we are. They can see whether it's in their story or the somebody else's story that they know, they start to go, this person's real, this person's the real deal. And that's what makes us trustable. So 
um, <clears throat> Why does being authentic yield results is because it lowers their fears and it also lowers our own fears. When we are living in our own authentic story, when we are telling our story the way it really is or was, um, there's no, there's no, uh, there's nothing false in that. So we, we end up having a high degree of confidence that we're being real, we're being honest, we're being truthful. And it turns out to really, really, really change the way we show up energetically. So people actually will connect with us much more easily and connect with us much with much more trust. So it fosters trust. It gives people things to attach to and identify with. And it actually makes it easier for people to stim be stimulated into action because then they realize you get them, you understand them because they now understand you. So um, <clears throat> where is business going? Um, I, I really want to spend a little bit, uh, quite a bit of time on this slide, if that's OK. Um, if anybody's ever seen the competition between our wireless cell phone carriers, you get, like, just say we'll pick up uh, the one that rhymes with Horizon and the other one that that's uh, got a couple of letters in it. And they're all, they're slogging it out for market share. And they do everything based on price and everything based on um, uh, <clears throat> uh, specials and everything based on uh, saying that they're the best and that they're the biggest and that they're, and they're, and they're trying to say that the other guys aren't. And all of this kind of battering around that they do for against their competition and also trying to just carve out a slice of the of the pie, <clears throat> that's a metrics based business. That's a company that's really lost its soul. It's a company that's really only got um, the dollars in their sights and and perhaps for a good cause because they can't there's nothing left for them to pursue. If the markets or the economy changes, they will dump their people as fast as they can because it's all about the metrics. And <clears throat> when the market gets better, they'll bring some people back and it will hardly ever be the same people. So if you're looking for stability in terms of resources, um, it gets harder and harder and harder. For company, these companies are wasting a tremendous amount of money on training and keeping things going and trying to get your eyeballs and attention for you to become a customer of theirs. <clears throat> so. Um, I'd like to then contrast that experience with Apple Computer, which is a, a fairly large entity. And I'm not saying they don't have metrics-driven behavior, but they're also very, very, very keen on focusing on culture. They're very, very keen on focusing on what's in it for you as the consumer. How does it change your life? How does it make your life better? And you'll notice it's extremely rare, if not 100% of the time, it does not happen. They don't offer you a price-based incentive to get their products. It's the culture that you're attaching to. It's the narrative that you're attaching to. It's what makes you feel good about yourself. It's in their story that they are there to serve you with innovative products and things that, that happen um, that make your life better. <clears throat> and, um, and that still, as big as those companies are, there's still some heart-based challenges here. But the, as you go through the business filter and you get to smaller and smaller and smaller businesses, the ones that are growing, the ones that are making a huge difference, the ones that are actually accelerating are the ones that are showing up with a heart-based, heart-centered model. Money is merely the side effect of uh, that kind of a business. They are, um, it's, and it's an, it's an extremely healthy side effect. It's part of their sustainability. It's part of their development and growth. It's part of what maybe if they have shareholder value they need to preserve or protect, it helps them take care of that kind of thing. So, uh, but it, and it's acting as a side effect. And there are indeed companies that actually have adopted um, these uh, limited corporate structures that allow them to invest in people first and not be sued by their shareholders. Um, they have limits in their liabilities with their shareholders because of the way they structure things. Patagonia is one of those companies. And, um, and Patagonia is a company that does tremendous give back, tremendous cultural, you know, human-based cultural enhancement focusing on their team players, focusing on their customers, and even focusing on people outside of their ecosystem in order to make the world a better place. And these are the companies that thrive. Patagonia is a huge company. It's a quiet company, too, but it's a huge company. And, um, and the reason why they've grown is because of this heart-based, heart-centered philosophy where money was the healthy side effect of doing the right things for society. So, um, so I ended up with having this tagline 
<clears throat> that um, I actually think represents what business should be doing, and that is is doing business at the speed of heart. And this begins with your authentic and great story. <laughs>